Good morning, NIMBYs. Good to see you. Um, I'm Shirley Judges. I'm a member of the Children Conservation Board, and that's obviously a NIMBY group par excellence, along with groups like the Children's Society, Children Countryside Group, um, and uh, good for us because what a relief it is to have a Secretary of State who isn't just a closet NIMBY like Hammond was, clobbering projects like Airtrack because they went through his constituency at the same time as deriding us as NIMBYs and Luddites and climate change deniers and all the other things. Justin Greening is an open NIMBY. She campaigned hard on behalf of her constituency against the third runway at Heathrow. And she said then that she thought local opinion mattered and it should be respected, to which I say hear, hear. Um, she's also said that the decision about HS2 will be based on evidence, not emotion. And again, I say jolly good, because the case for HS2 is very much based on emotion. It's based on emotions like national pride. You know, we've got to have, if everybody else has got one, we've got to have one too, and ours has got to be bigger and better. It's based on things like excitement. Won't it be wonderful to whiz hither and thither at 240 miles an hour, not able to see where you're going and your stomach's still in orderly edge when you get to Birmingham? Um, and it's based on things like fear, standby of politicians, or oh, won't it be terrible if we don't do this? You know, it might, all sorts of dreadful things could, could happen. Our arguments are based on the evidence. Our, our arguments are based on fact. And number one, speaking... And number one, speaking on behalf of the Conservation Board, is the fact that the Chilterns are an outstandingly beautiful area. That's not just emotion. It is a statement enshrined in Act of Parliament. And we have a duty to protect this area. It's not just because we love it. It's not just because we feel strongly about it. It's because it is nationally important and it is our responsibility to look after it. It's the responsibility of politicians to look after it as well, but they seem to have forgotten that. So it's our duty to remind them of it. And the AONB isn't just concerned about the area inside the boundaries. We are specifically concerned about what happens in the area surrounding the AONB that impinges upon it. And so that clearly includes Wendover, the Vale of Aylesbury, as well as the other areas around and about. So we're not just looking at the bit inside our borders. We care very much about what is going on around here, across the, the Vale of Aylesbury, to what happens to the view from Coombe Hill. Um, and what could happen is appalling. I mean, some notes on the main impacts of, of um, HS2 potentially on the AONB. Um, as you know, nine miles, it's nine miles through um, the, the AONB itself, but obviously much further than that through the Chilterns, of which a substantial proportion is the open, in the open. Some of it's tunneled, some of it's in cuttings. And that is going to result in at least 11 million cubic metres of spoil. Less than 10% can be used locally um, for embankments. So the question is, what are they going to do with the rest of it? And it is a matter of fact that they don't know. They haven't thought about it. They haven't even worked out how much spoil there was going to be. Um, the sort of suspicion is they thought they'd just be able to chuck it over the fence. So if in 10 years' time you find that there are two or three new Chiltern Hills, you'll know where they've come from. But the alternative to just dumping it, which is what they seem to think they might be able to get away with doing, is clearly to transport it. And the prospect of that is appalling. It would be millions of journeys to and fro with lorries shunting this stuff around the countryside not to mention all the additional materials that will have to be shunted in by way of concrete and posts and aggregate and goodness knows what. So it, that it is a matter of fact that that will be a huge problem, quite apart from the devastating impact of carving a trench through some of the most beautiful countryside in the country 
um, the impact of that will be. So things like um, 7.8 hectares of woodland will be lost from 28 different woods. 10.9 hectares of ancient woodland will be lost. Oh, they say, well, we can mitigate that. We, we can replace it. Uh, no, you can't. It took at least 500 years to establish itself. You cannot replace that. Um, 13, um, sorry, 13,700 meters of hedgerow will be lost. Habitat for all sorts of creatures, birds, um, small mammals, and so forth. 25 public rights of ways will be severed, including the Ridgeway, the Chiltern Way, and the, the Chiltern Cycle Way. And part of Grimm's Ditch will be destroyed, which is an ancient monument. And we do not know how much other archaeology, which has yet to be discovered, will be discovered and promptly trashed. That's all fact. That is what we know will happen. I will leave others to, to, to tell you about what you already know about the economic arguments um, and the other arguments that are being put forward to support this ridiculous scheme, which are just as much fiction as anything else. But these are the facts. This is what we know. And so this is what we have to get across to Miss Greening. And it's, organized, you know, it's things like this which are so important to get those arguments across and it's raising the money to pay the people who can persuade her who are in contact with the right people. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for your generosity, which I'm sure will be lavish. And uh, thank you for listening.